Hi guys, welcome to Art of Coding. Today's video will cover one more topic in our Symphony 5 playlist. In this video, we will talk about event subscriber in Symphony 5. Again, we will follow the official documentation provided by the Symphony. First, we need to go to this link. I will share this link in the description box as well. So on the terminal, I am inside my project. I will start the server first. As always, the project is running on this URL. So now our project is running. First of all, let me explain a little bit about the event subscriber. The main difference between the event listener and event subscriber is that the event subscriber always knows that which event they are listening. If currently it is not that much clear, then don't worry. I will explain by using the given example. Then it will be very clear to you. So first we will create our event subscriber folder inside our source folder. I am inside the source folder of our Symphony 5 app. Here I will create a new folder named event subscriber. So our folder is created. Inside this folder I will create a new event subscriber. For this example we will use the exception subscriber. So we can also use all the predefined events here. As you can check in my previous video, I have explained about the pre-built events. We can use them in event listeners, also in event subscribers. The main advantage of using event subscriber is that we can add multiple function inside an event subscriber. Also, the control is in our hand. In the event listener, the control is not in our hand. There will be always one function. Here we can easily define multiple functions. Because of this advantage, even the Symphony internally use event subscriber, but not the event listeners. So now first we will create our exception subscriber.php file inside our event subscriber folder. So our file is created. Let's open it in the editor. Here we have an empty file, but we will copy the code from the example given in Symphony 5 documentation. Just copy the whole code and paste it in the file. So our code is pasted here. Next we need to add some changes in our services.yaml file inside the config folder. So I have already noted down the code which is required to register our event subscriber. So I will paste this code inside my services.yaml file. So our code is paste it and you can check this is the path to our event subscriber file and here we registered our event subscriber the next thing is first we will remove all these function so you can see that we removed all the function and currently we are using only one function and also calling it i will make it test one also make it test now if I will print anything inside this then if there is an exception error then user will see this line I refreshed my project and you can see that if there will be any exception error then user will be reach inside this function first we are getting an exception error because we did not create it any route yet for our home page next is if we want to create the multiple functions so you can see that now we have three method inside our if exception subscriber test one test two and test three currently if i will refresh then user will reach to this method if i will again refresh so you can see that after refreshing our project the user is inside the first function the first function we have added another benefit of using event subscriber is that we can set the priority of our methods for example and minus one and here you can see that i have added priorities to the methods and by default the priority is zero and the function with the highest number highest priority number will be called first and the lowest priority number will be called at the end so according to this priority first of all test 2 will be called then test 1 and after that test 3 will be called now if i will refresh my project then user will be reached 
to our test2 function so you can clearly see that the user is inside the test2 function because of the priority now if i change it to echo so as we know that first the test2 will be called after that test1 and the, at the last test3 will be called so we change the dd to echo so that we can reach to every function and we added a die to the test3 function because we know that at last this function will be called now let's refresh our project and check what will happen so you can see that first the user is in the test2 then test1 and then at the end test3 if i change the priority of test1 to minus 11 then user will first go to test2 then test3 and at last user will go to test1 to check that i will add the die in the test1 function now if i will refresh the project then you will see that first of all test2 function will be called after that test3 function will be called and at the last test1 function will be called you can clearly see that test2 test3 and at the last test1 function is called so i hope now it is clear that what is the advantages of using event subscriber and how we can use it we can use all the pre build event listeners which i have described in my previous video in the event subscriber as well we can also create the custom events in the symphony 5 application i will talk about the custom events in my another video so that's all for today's video i hope the video will be helpful if you like the video then please press the like button the only request is that if the videos are helpful and if you like them then please also subscribe to my channel because the subscriber count is still very low if you will subscribe to my channel then it will motivate me to create more videos also please press the bell icon to get the notification of my upcoming videos thank you